So welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK and today I am sharing with you how to crochet these really cute luggage style gift tags. They each have a little hole for you to pop some ribbon through and to attach them easily to your presents and I'm going to show you some ideas on how you can personalise them on these plain ones and of course how to create your very own Santa belt gift tag as well. Now before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out another one of my crochet patterns or tutorials again. Let's find out those materials we need to make our very own gift tags. So the materials that you're going to need to make your very own crocheted gift tag is any size 3 or DK weight yarn. Now I'm going to be using this Sirdar Snuggly which is a cashmere merino blend kind of a bit luxury but then it is for a gift so I thought why not this is shade number 467 and it's kind of a light stone colour which I think looks really nice especially if you are going to add on some detail later it makes it a nice base colour to add some contrast if you're looking to make your own Santa belt version of this gift tag I used a worsted weight yarn so it's a little bit bigger and this is kind of ideal if you're looking to make a tag for maybe a secret Santa or for that present that Santa brings your children. This is a great way of doing it. It works out slightly bigger than the other pattern. It's just a tiny bit bigger because we're using a bigger yarn. But if you're using a worsted weight to recreate this pattern, it's going to be half an inch longer and half an inch wider. So not that much difference because you're still going to use a four millimeter crochet hook. Gather all of your materials and let's get started. So for row one, we're going to begin by making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And we're going to start by making a chain of 13. So we just yarn over the hook and bring our hook through the loop on our hook and do that 13 times. So that's two, three, four. and 13. I'm then going to work one single crochet into the second chain from hook. So remembering that this loop doesn't count, there's our first chain right underneath our hook. We're going to put our hook underneath that second chain, but just under the top loop. We yarn over, bring that loop back up, yarn over and pull through two, which is a US single crochet and a UK double crochet. We're then going to work one US single crochet or one UK double crochet into each chain across, making sure we don't work into those nice, easy to access big holes we make as we work these stitches. So work one single crochet into each chain across and I will meet you at the end of row one. At the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 12 single crochets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. And there's that chain that we missed. So rows 2 all the way up to row 13, we're going to do the following. We make a turning chain of 1 just by yarning over and bringing our hook through that loop on our hook. We then turn our work like a page in a book. And then we're working into that first stitch underneath our chain one. So we're just inserting our hook, yarning over. We've got to make sure we've grabbed both those loops. Yarn over, bring your loop up, yarn over and pull through two. And we're working one single crochet into each stitch across, which means that we will maintain our stitch count of 12 single crochets. We're going to repeat this for a total of 13 rows. I'm going to work a few rows and then show you how easy it is to count your single crochet rows so that you don't get confused. So I just wanted to show you how you can count your rows of single crochets nice and easily. As you can see on, if I hold it at the side, you can almost see two lines coming down it. From the other side, it's not so clear. There are still the two lines, but then you've got these random bits at the edges. So what, um, I've actually completed six rows at this point. You can see it's a little bit curly. So if yours is, don't worry. And what this is showing you is where these lines are. This is two rows, this is two rows, and this is two rows. From this side, you've got two rows here, two rows there, and a single row on the top and the bottom. 
So have a look at both sides when you're counting and find the one where it looks like you've got the thicker bit at the bottom and then it's just two, four and six. Now we're repeating row two so that we have a total row count of 13. So you will, you should have one row above your 12, if that makes sense. So you should have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and then one single row. So work all your rows of single crochet, and then I'm gonna meet you back to create that shape of the top of our crochet gift tag. So once you've worked your 13 rows, you can see that you've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and there's row 13 for me. And this is where we're gonna start decreasing to create the top shape of our luggage tag. Now, as you can see, it's still a little bit curly, but don't worry, we are going to edge the whole way around, which will help to keep it flat. I'm also gonna show you a very quick way of blocking this pattern without having to use pins. So going on to row 14, we're gonna start with our turning chain of one that does not count as a stitch. And we're going to go straight into decreasing across the next two stitches. So we're working into that first stitch underneath our chain and we're going to work a US single crochet two together, which is the same as a double crochet two together for a UK terminology. So we're first going to insert our hook into that first stitch. We yarn over and bring a loop up. We're then going to insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a third loop before we yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And that reduces that stitch count by one. We're then gonna work one single crochet into each stitch across until we only have two stitches remaining. So I now have two stitches remaining. You can see the two of these there. And we're gonna work our next decrease stitch across these two stitches. So we insert our hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So at the end of row 14, we reduced our stitch count by two with these two single crochets together, meaning that we only have a stitch count of 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. For row 15, we're going to start with a turning chain of one, and then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the stitches across. So remember that we're working directly underneath that chain one, but where we did the decrease, it will look a little bit bigger. So just make sure you're inserting your hook into that first stitch to work your first single crochet and then work one single crochet into each stitch across. And this will maintain our stitch count. We're not reducing or decreasing on this row. We're just kind of securing the decreases that we did and keeping the shape nice and smooth. Apologies for the squeaking, I'm a bit hot underneath my ring light, so it makes me a bit sweaty, sorry. So at the end of row 15, we should still have a stitch count of 10 single crochets. For row 16, we're repeating row 14, where we worked those two single crochets two together at the ends and the beginning of the row. So we start with our turning chain of one, and we're inserting our hook underneath that first stitch, underneath that chain one, yarn over, bring a loop up, and then we're inserting our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring another loop up, before we yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're then gonna work one single crochet into each stitch across to the last two stitches, And when we've reached those last two stitches, again, we're decreasing the stitch count again. So we're working another single crochet two together. So we insert the hook to the next stitch, bring our loop up, insert the hook into the next, yarn over the hook to bring up a third loop before we yarn over and pull through all three loops. So at the end of row 16, we should now have a stitch count of eight. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now in row 17, we're going to be making a hole for us to be able to insert our ribbon or our, our twine so that we can tie our tags onto our presents. So we start by making a chain of one, and then we're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. We're then going to work one single crochet into the next two stitches. So that's one and two. So we should now have three stitches. We're then going to work a chain of two. So we just yarn over, pull our hook through, yarn over, pull our hook through. And we're going to skip two stitches as well. And those two chains are going to cover the spaces of those skipped stitches. We're then going to work one single crochet into each of the last three stitches. So we skip the next two, insert our hook into the next and work one single crochet and one single crochet into the remaining stitches. So at the end of row 17, you should have a little hole and that's where we're gonna be able to insert our ribbon or our twine, whatever we're using to tie on our tags. And you'll also have a stitch count of six single crochets with your chain two as well. So, so for row 18, we start with our turning chain of one we're then going to work a decrease across the first two stitches. So we insert, bring our loop up, insert into the next, bring another loop up before we yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're then going to work one single crochet into the next stitch. And then we've reached our chain two. And into this chain two space, we're going to work two single crochets. So we just insert our hook into the hole, yarn over, bring our loop up, and yarn over, pull through two as normal. We're working a second single crochet into that same chain two space. So we insert the hook, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through two. We're then gonna work one single crochet into the next stitch, followed by our decrease across the last two stitches. So we insert, bring a loop up, insert into the next stitch, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we still have our little hole to work into and now we have a stitch count of six single crochets. For row 19, we start with a chain of one and then we work one single crochet into that same stitch as our chain one and in each stitch across as well. We're maintaining our stitch count as six single crochets for row 19 and at the end of this row we're not going to turn we're not going to do anything we're going to move straight on to our edging so at the end of row 19 you should have a stitch count of six single crochets and from here we're going straight into our edging just to show that mine's also curling single crochets are the worst stitch for curling but this edging we're going to do is to help not only is it going to tidy up the edges, but it's also going to help our gift tag stay nice and flat as well. So we're going to work in one big circle all the way back to where we start here. We're going to start by making a chain of one. And then we're rotating our work to work into the ends of each of these rows. And we start with row 19 that we've just worked by working a single crochet into that hole right underneath our chain one and underneath that last stitch that we made. So we just insert the hook and work our single crochet. And you can see your ends of the rows here, all these holes as we go down, we're gonna be working into those. So we've worked into this one to create a nice corner and we're just gonna insert our hook into the end of the next row and into the next. You can see just by giving it a little pull about, you can see those ends of the rows nice and easily. So by the time you reach the bottom here where our slip knot is, you will have worked 18 single crochets when you get to this slip knot. So we've already done one into that same stitch as the first one. So there's one, two, three, four. So keep working all the way down to that corner where your slip knot is, placing one single crochet into each end of the row and I'll meet you there for working our corner. 
I'm just working my 18th single crochet down and I've reached the space where my slip knot is. So you should have a really nice looking edging coming down the side of your gift tag here. And what we're going to do where our slip knot is, is work our corner. So rather than just keep going round and making everything look a bit curly, we're going to work a corner stitch into where our slip knot is. So we're going to insert our hook into this space here, which is the other side of our chain. We're going to yarn over, bring a loop up and pull through two for our single crochet. We then chain one and we're working back into the same space again, working a second single crochet. And as we continue working along the other side of our chain, this will create a really nice corner. Now I'm also going to take a moment to work over the end of my tail here so I don't have to weave it in. And what we're doing here is we're working on the other side of our initial chain. And you can see that there's a hole. If you just pull up a little bit, you'll see there's a hole where the two parts of the chain are crossed. And that's where we're inserting our hook, right under there. And we're just working one single crochet into the other side of our chain. We're only going to be making 10 of these to reach the next where, uh, to the next place where we're working our next corner and working over that tail the whole time so I don't have to weave that in later. So once we have just one, I'm going to move my tail out of the way. Once we have just one chain remaining, this is where we're going to work our corner to match up this lovely corner that we have over here. So in this final chain, we're going to work one single crochet, a chain one, and a further single crochet back into that same space again, and that creates our next corner. We're then going to work one single crochet into the end of each row all the way back up to our very last stitch before the start of our final row. See where that chain is where we turned? So that's where we're going to meet. Just have a good, you can have a pull around and find that first hole that you need to be inserting your hook into to make sure you're putting them into the end of each row. So work one single crochet into the end of each row all the way back up to the start of our final row. And that's where we're going to place our final corner. You can feel a little bit tricky when you're working in these decrease rows as to where the row ends are. They seem a little big in comparison to the other side. But just place them as best you can. And that's me back to my final row end, just underneath that first stitch of the final row that we made. And this is where we're going to place our corner. So if you can see, I'm all the way back up to the top. I've worked in here. I'm going to work into this hole here, working one single crochet, a chain one, and a further single crochet. And that gives us our nice corner. We're then going to work one single crochet into each of the stitches across the top of row 19. And once we've made our way all the way back to that first single crochet that we made, I'm just going to slip stitch into that last stitch I've worked into. And then we're ready to fasten off. Should be laying flatter, not 100%. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm going to fasten off, leaving a nice long tail to allow me to weave in and use my hook to bring that through. Now, if like me, your project's a little bit curly, it probably just needs a little bit of a stretch around to kind of put the stitches where we need them to be. If it's still a bit curly, the easiest way to prevent that from happening is of course blocking. Now, the quickest way is just if you grab your steam iron, put it on a steam setting with a tail, <laughs> don't hold the actual tag, just hold the tail and waft it in front of your steam coming out of your iron and it will relax quite a lot and become flat. I'm going to quickly do mine. I very lightly steamed mine then. I also caught my thumb a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just going to make sure that it's laying flat and then you just need to leave it to dry. If need be, you can place something on it just to make sure that that is going to dry flat rather than have to pin it out. This end isn't a problem. It's just that little corner there. I'm going to leave that on top to dry. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tutorial. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And of course, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And I will see you for the next pattern tutorial.